Hey guys, Def Camp here, and welcome to another Classic WoW.Live guide. In this guide, we're going to be exploring class balancing in Vanilla WoW in its 1.121 state, which is what will be used for Classic WoW. We're doing this to help you better pick your class once Classic is released. Hey guys, Melderon here. Now I know what many of you are probably thinking, Classic WoW was horribly balanced. It's actually not true when you look at the game in its three main segments. Leveling, PvE, and PvP. And in our opinion, these three aspects have equal weight when you think about the game as a whole. Now, of course, there are many that don't care about one of these aspects. You may just want to do PvP endgame, you may just want to do PvE endgame, or you may just want to level alts for the rest of your life. And that's fine. But when you look at class balancing in the game as a whole, it's important to realize that classes are much more closely balanced than you probably think when you look at all three aspects of the game. So that being said, use this scoring system the way you want to play the game. If leveling is not important to you, forget about those numbers. If PvP is important to you, subtract that from your total score. We try to provide the most balanced and fair scores available for each of these three aspects to make you more informed when choosing a class. So we scored each class for each of the three aspects, leveling, PvE, and PvP, with the score from 1 to 10, with 1 being poor, 5 being approximately average, and 10 being excellent. Now these scores may seem extremely subjective, however we tried to take into account leveling speed, DPS and healing parses, and PvP rankings in our decision making. Furthermore, in Vanilla WoW, most classes are pigeonholed into a certain role endgame, and if that is the case, they are slightly penalized for that. In other words, since hunters can only do damage in raids, they are extremely role limited, and that may not be attractive to a lot of players, therefore we limited scores if that was the case. In that same vein or respect, classes that do have multiple roles but are not optimal in those other roles are also slightly penalized for that as well. A good example would be a paladin. Paladins can tank, of course, but since they don't have a taunt, they are not usually taken into raids for that role. First, let's get into the warrior. Now, it's no surprise that warriors get a 1 for leveling because they are the slowest levelers. They don't have any way of healing themselves, they are heavily gear dependent, and the leveling process is really rough if you want to level a warrior. However, if you get to level 60, you will find the job and you will have a purpose. PvP we give them an 8 because they can be extremely powerful in PvP scenario skirmishes, especially in battlegrounds, and they're even more dangerous with a healer. And because mages and rogues can potentially be a little bit more dangerous, we gave them an 8 here. However, if they are with a healer, they could potentially be even a 10 here. But since we're looking at the class individually, we're going to give them an 8 for this. For PvE, they get a solid 10 for two reasons. One. They're usually the top parse in DPS, and two, they are the de facto tanks in Classic WoW. Because they have two different roles that they excel at, or they are the most optimal position at, there is no way to not give them a 10 in that position. That gives them a total of 19 points. Now the strengths for Warriors is that they have top damage potential, they are the top tanks, and they have high PvP potential. And then the weaknesses are extremely slow leveling and high gear dependence. Alright, so next we move on to the Paladin. Paladins are Alliance only. So for leveling, obviously, we get a low score here, no surprise. We give them a 2. Paladins are very limited to how much damage they can do and how many mobs they can kill at a time. Now, you can get around that around level 40 as going AoE tanking build, but they're still very dependent on mana, and they just are not very quick levelers. For PvP, we gave them an 8. Now, Red Paladins are known to be very dangerous on the battlefield, and Holy Paladins are also very good in PvP. Because they have two PvP specs that are viable and optimal, we gave them an 8. Now for PvE, we gave them a 6. And let me explain this. Paladins are very limited to what they can do in PvE endgame. For the most part, you will be healing. However, they are the strongest healer at endgame, in my opinion, because of the Illumination talent, which gives you mana back, and they are just very efficient healers. And when it comes to vanilla, efficiency is the name of the game for healing. However, since protection is only viable in dungeons, and Rhett is very difficult to be competitive at, we gave them a 6 here. So that gives us a total of 16 for the Paladin. Some of your strengths are high healing efficiency, high PvP potential, and powerful buffs, while their weaknesses are slow leveling and limited roles in PvE. Next, we move on to the Rogue. Now, again, this is another class that has some difficulty leveling because they have no healing, and they also are very limited into how many mobs they can pull at once and how much damage they take. They do, however, get a small point for being able to stealth and pick and choose your mobs. 
Next, we move on to PvP. Many of you are probably not surprised to hear that rogues are very good at PvP. I would consider them to be the best PvP class because they have the ability to choose their battles and control the fight very well. When it comes to ganking, you're probably going to be ganked by many rogues and there are going to be a lot of rogues come Classic WoW. If you want a PvP, rogues are a great choice. For PvE, we gave them an 8. They are very strong in PvE, usually at the top of the damage meter, somewhere around 2nd or 3rd. However, they are roll limited, they can only DPS, but they do it extremely well. So our total here is 21. Some of your strengths are high damage potential, high PvP potential, and low gear dependence. While your weaknesses are slow at leveling, and of course you are limited to your role as a DPS in PvE and in PvP. Let's now move on to the Shaman, which is also a hybrid class, very similar to the Paladin. This is a Horde-only class. For leveling, we gave him a 4, primarily because of Ghost Wolf, which you obtain at level 20, and provides a 40% increase to in movement speed. They can heal, so they can take multiple mobs on, usually, and they have many mechanics that allows them to get out of fights if they need to. For PvP, we gave them an 8, because all three specs are viable. They may not be the best or optimal specs, but they are viable. Elemental Shaman can really produce a lot of damage very, very quickly. Enhancement Shamans are highly based on RNG, but can also provide a burst damage when needed. And Restoration Shamans are excellent in PvP skirmishes, primarily due to Chain Heal and their totems. For PvE, we gave them a 5, because as with most hybrid classes, there is a hybrid tax, and they really are relegated only to healing during endgame. Elemental and enhancement are not great at all, and are subpar in DPS and mana efficiency. However, Restoration Shaman, with Chain Heal and their totem utility, are heavily needed in Horde raids. They get a total of 17. Your strengths as a Shaman are going to have effective healing with Chain Heal, high PvP potential as all three specs are viable, high utility in the form of totems, your weaknesses are going to be average leveling, and you're heavily role limited in PvE. Alright, next we move on to the Priest. So for leveling, Priests are very average levelers. They can be very efficient levelers while leveling Shadow, however you should get used to wanding a lot. Priests have many abilities to deal with multiple mobs such as Psychic Scream, and also for heavy damage intake such as your shield and inner fire. Priests are also very cool in the aspect where they can mind control elite mobs to help kill guys that you normally would not be able to kill. Priests are average leveling at speed, but they do have a lot of cool abilities that help you kill your mobs. So for leveling, we gave them a 5. For PvP, Priests can be extremely powerful, and we gave them a 7 here. Shadow is great in PvP and is probably one of the best 1v1 specs. Holy and Discipline also play a big role in PvP, with being some of the best healers and dispellers on the battlefield. Also, being able to mind control people off ledges is a lot of fun. For PvE, we gave them a 6. Now, while Priests are one of the best healers in the game, they are very limited to what they can do in PvE. Most of the time you are going to be healing, either as Discipline with your Power Infusion or as a Holy Priest. However, there are small scenarios where you will be invited as a Shadow Priest to give that Shadow Weaving buff. And for that reason, we gave them a total of 6, which is about average. That gives us a total of 18 for Priests. Some of your strengths are high healing potentials, high PvP potential, while the weaknesses are average leveling and roles limited in PvE. Okay, next we move on to the vending machine. Uh, I mean mage. So mages are great in a lot of different respects. Mages have about average to even higher than average leveling. We gave them a 6 there. And you can increase that leveling potential by AoE farming. That depends really on the server population size and how crowded things are, but it's something you can do. For PvP, we give them a 9. Mages have a lot of unique abilities to help them control the fight, in a similar vein that rogues do. They can freeze, they can reapply freeze, they can ice block, they can slow their attackers down, they can hard CC their opponents in the form of polymorph. Frost is an amazing PvP tree, but even fire has potential, and that's why we give them a 9 in PvP. In PvE, of course, they have that hard CC ability in the form of polymorph, but they also, but they also have the potential to top the charts in both raids and dungeons and they provide utility in the forms of water, food, and portals. Also, they can remove curses. Because they're all limited and really can only do damage, we only gave them an 8 here. Mages get a total of 23. Now, the strengths of a mage are high damage potential, high PvP potential, high utility in the forms of food, water, and portals, and decursing, and they have high farm potential endgame. The weaknesses for the mage are their role limited in PvE and PvP, and you can have some high downtime between pulls because their abilities are very mana expensive. 
All right, next we move on to the Warlock. For leveling, Warlocks are extremely efficient, and for that reason, we gave them a 7. Very much like a hunter, your pet will hold aggro while you focus on killing your target or targets, because Warlocks are very good at dealing with multiple mobs at once. Also, the ability to life tap means that you will not have to drink as much, you just have to maintain your health. For PvP, Warlocks are a very formidable class. The ability to control your target relatively well by CCing with Fear, Mortal Coil, and also using your Succubus. There are many things you can do as a Warlock to drain your target down. They also have really cool abilities such as sacrificing their pets to give themselves a shield, so Warlocks become a very formidable foe on the battlefield. That is why we gave them a 7 in PvP. Now for PvE, we gave Warlocks a 6 because they are role limited and they do not really top the charts. However, come next Ramus, Warlocks can become very strong. They are, however, very dependent on gear and that is why we gave them a 6 in PvE. That gives us a total of 20 for Warlocks. Your strengths is that you are a fast leveler, you have high PvP potential and high utility in the form of health stones, summoning, and soul stones. Your weaknesses are you are very role limited in PvE and PvP, and again, you have very high gear dependence in PvE. Next, we have the Druid. Now for leveling, believe it or not, Druids get an 8. They are the second quickest levelers. And the reason why is they have high damage potential and can also heal themselves if they get into trouble. And if you pull too many mobs, you can go into bear form or just run away by going to cat form. The thing is, you have many options as a Druid, including being able to stealth as well. Also, you get a movement speed bonus very early on with feline swiftness and then travel form at level 30. So not only can you do a lot of damage, heal yourself, kill multiple mobs, but you also get very good movement speed bonuses as well. All those things included make druids excellent levelers with a score again of 8. Now for PvP, I really feel that druids are very underestimated. We gave them a 7 here. That is because not only are they amazing flag carriers, not only are they very good with high amounts of damage and burst, but balance is also a very viable spec in PvP. The ability to shift out of any route and also being able to stealth and do high amounts of burst damage is a very dangerous combination when facing almost any foe. They have very good 1v1 potential and are all around just great to have on your team. Now for PvE, Druids only score 4. The reason why is, although they are relatively good healers, when it comes to the rest of the healers, they are usually at the bottom of the list compared to the other healers. They can tank relatively well, but usually you will see prot warriors running the game when it comes to tanking. So because they are pretty much very role limited in PvE, they did only score a 4 here. That gives us a total of 19 for Druids. Some of the strengths for Druids is that they are fast levelers, have high PvP potential, and also have high utility in the form of Battle Res and Innervate. While their weaknesses are the fact that they are role limited in PvE and offer suboptimal healing and tanking when compared to other classes. Okay, time to talk about the last class on our list, the Hunter. Now, it's no surprise here that Hunters get a solid 10 in leveling. They are by far the fastest leveling class, and this is for a number of reasons, but mostly it's because of their pet and their ability to do high damage with their auto attacks. So pets can be of multiple different types. You can actually have a lot of customization with that, and you can optimize pets for tanking capability, DPS, or other abilities. And with your pet, you have the capability of farming very quickly, killing multiple mobs at a time, switching from mob to mob. You don't have to spend a lot of mana to kill mobs, you can just auto attack, put it on a serpent's thing, and move on to the next one. Whereas warlocks are going to have a lot more downtime due to their higher mana usage. Also, you'll gain movement speed increase in the form of Aspect of the Cheetah, which can be even be modified in the Beast Mastery Tree, and you have the capability of soloing many quests that require you to kill elite mobs. For PvP, we give them a 5. They are, of course, a good PvP class, but in our eyes, they're actually pretty average. During the leveling process, if you open up on someone, it's very hard for them to kill you. But in battleground scenarios and in endgame PvP, hunters can be killed by closing the distance between them and focusing on the hunter itself and ignoring the pet. But in open world PvP scenarios, hunters are very, very good. However, since most endgame PvP is done in battlegrounds, we only gave them a 5 here, which is approximately average. 
For PvE, they get a 3. Out of the pure damage classes, they actually are the lowest on the totem pole when it comes to parses over the course of all raid tiers. They are pretty powerful in the beginning, but they don't scale well over the course of vanilla. For that, we only gave them a 3, since they are pretty low on the totem pole, but also are role limited as well. So we get a total of 18 for the hunter. Now your strengths are the fastest leveling possible and high farm potential while during leveling and at end game. So they're really good for making money. Your weaknesses are gonna be role limited in both PVE and PVP and you'll have pretty low raid DPS for a pure damage class. So here are all the classes that we can compare them all. And this is ranked by total score. And as you can see, Paladin has the lowest total score and Mage has the highest total score. What I'm trying to argue here is that when you take all things into account, leveling, PVP, and PVE, classes become much more balanced than you probably previously thought. However, if you're not interested in certain aspects of this, remove that column and calculate your own totals and see if that helps you make a better decision and if classes seem to be a little more balanced to you in that respect. The leveling process is long and it's a commitment to pick a class in Classic WoW. So hopefully this guide has helped you realize what you want to play, why you want to play it, and what each class strengths and weaknesses are. Now it's no surprise to me that Mage is number one here because they do well in pretty much every aspect. Also, it's interesting to see that Priests, Hunters, Warriors, and Druids kind of fall in the average range there. Now, Warriors are historically known to be the most played classes in most private servers, and it's interesting to see that they fall kind of average when you take the leveling into account. And you'll see a lot of Warriors being created in Classic WoW, but I guarantee you that they all won't make it to 60 because of the grind and because of how hard the leveling process is. But if you get there, the rewards are there. And finally, Paladins and Shamans, which are historically the least played classes, do have the lowest scores because of their pure hybrid nature. Now with all of this being said, I'd like to add that just because a class you like or spec that you like scored low on this list does not in any way mean you should not play it. If you have your heart set on something you like, like playing as an enhancement shaman in PvE, we would be one of the first ones to say go and do it. However, keep in mind you will most likely need to work harder than most to prove your worth. That being said, play what you love and feel connected to first and foremost, and then maybe consider some of the points on this list that we mentioned in your decision. Again, what segment do you play the most? If leveling doesn't matter to you, then take that out of the equation. What role do you want to play? If you only want to heal and you want to be the best healer, then Paladin might be your choice, or maybe Priest. Also, what style of tanking, damage, or healing do you like? Do you like the idea of using totems and having chain heal? Do you like the idea of a single target healer? Do you like to be a bear tank? Do you like melee, ranged? Put that in your equation. Last, final, and probably one of the most important, which class speaks to you the most? The class fantasy, what do you feel most connected with? Again, like I said, before all this comes into play, that should be the thing that you care about the most. If not, then this guide will be great for you either way. Well, ladies and gents, that concludes this presentation. We hope this guide helped you understand if Classic WoW really is truly balanced along class lines, and we also hope that this guide helped you choose what class you want to play when Classic WoW launches. If you like this content we're putting out, please like. Also, if you enjoy this type of content, please consider subscribing because we have a lot more guides coming and a lot more other videos, including Def Talk, which is a podcast that we upload to YouTube, Spotify, Google Play, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and iTunes. Also, you can follow us on Twitter and Discord. Links to all those things will be in the description. This guide, as well as many other guides, will also be available on ClassicWild.live, so definitely head over there and check us out. Brandon Media, a friend of the channel, has also designed merchandise for Def Camp Maldoran TV, so if you're interested in picking up a Def Camp Maldoran TV hoodie or t-shirt, head on over to Brandon Media's website. The link will be in the description. And last but not least, finally, thank you patrons for making videos like this possible and increasing the quality of the videos we make. Thank you so much, patrons, for your continued support. If you're interested in becoming a patron, a link will be in the description, as well as a clickable link at the end of the video. Thank you all for watching, keep on keybinding and grinding, and I'll hope to see you in Classic Azeroth.